This is America Daily. Bringing you the best in truthful news updates and in-depth reports happening now. Welcome to America Daily. I'm your host, Vanessa Rios Gomez. Today we have a very special and inspiring guest, Wen Yi Wang. She's here to talk about the atrocities, specifically the evil medical practices happening in China. And she also has a special message for the liberal TV personality Rachel Maddow, host of an MSNBC show who made some false statements about Wen Yi. In that lengthy discussion and program by Rachel Maddow, I was personally discussed and for quite a long uh, period, I think. But the only problem I feel is um, some uh, uh, Iranian statement she made. And the, uh, so that's why I wrote the uh, open letter to not only to her, Rachel Maddow, and also the, all the executive officers in Universal NBC and MSNBC and and so the her, her uh, production team Meadow had created a hit piece segment on her show targeting the Epic Times newspaper In the hit piece Meadow made quite a few false allegations including making fun of Wen Yi's very serious and heartfelt actions actions that no sane and rational human being would make fun of. But Rachel Maddow somehow did. Before we get into Wen Yi's story, let me give you a little information on her background. You may not recall hearing her name, but what Wen Yi Wang did was all over the news. And so you've likely heard about it. Wen Yi is the woman whose loud, heartfelt pleading shouts disrupted the White House welcoming ceremony for China's then General Secretary of the Communist Party, Hu Jintao. President George W. Bush was in office at that time. It was April 20, 2006. She was an Epic Times reporter assigned to cover the event. But upon seeing the communist regime leader take the stage and begin speaking, Wen Yi couldn't help herself. She started shouting at him. I have come to enhance dialogues, expand common ground, deepen mutual trust and cooperation, and promote the all-round growth of constructive and cooperative China-U.S. relations in the 21st century. Her words are barely audible in video clips, but she was close enough to the stage for Hu Jintao to hear her. And when viewing the video, you can see she was saying something that clearly upset him. Wen Yi shouted in Mandarin, Stop the persecution of Falun Gong. Falun Dafa is good. And she was shouting a reminder to him, saying the phrase, Karmic retribution. She said she wished to remind him to be good and to do good deeds. I talked with Wen Yi to get the full story. Welcome, Wen Yi. It's a pleasure to have you on America Daily. Thank you. In 2006, you were attending an event on the White House lawn as a member of the press. Yet that day you made the news headlines for shouting something during former Chinese regime leader Hu Jintao's visit to the White House. What were you protesting, and why did you decide to do that? It's really uh, uh, try to speak out for the human rights in China, especially for the people being persecuted all illegally organ harvested, uh, the Falun Gong practitioners. And 
this is a long story because uh, before that incident, there is uh, some long searching research on the issue of uh, organ harvesting taking place in China, especially uh, the organ harvest from uh, uh, living Falun Gong practitioners. And the I thought the um, the only chance for me that time is really voice out to let people hear the story and they hear that the uh, something happened inside China, an unspeakable human rights abuse against peaceful Falun Gong practitioners. On that day, you were there as a journalist for the Epic Times. Correct. But but you actually have a PhD in pharmacology, is it? Yes, and MD. Okay. Yeah. And as a journalist, you specialized in writing about medical issues and researching China's forced organ harvesting of prisoners, as you mentioned. Did you witness anything related to forced organ harvesting while you were a medical professional in China? Actually, before I came to the United States, we uh, already knew some of the uh, illegal incident happened in China in terms of organ transplant medicine. And because the China for long history and since the seventies and when they start out the organ harvesting, they just use the exe, uh, execute prisoners' organ without without the consent. That I knew when I was a medical student inside China. But that time, we were all told those prisoners, they are criminals or enemy of state. So in another words, and then the government have anything to control of. They can use whatever they want. They can kill the person. You have to understand that China is ruled not by law, it's by the power. And the uh, so inside China, when someone has been uh, considered as a criminal, so there is no due process. Or oh, the person cannot invite uh, or hire any uh, attorneys or lawyers to defend for themselves. So anything happened, just the uh, you have to listen to what the government uh, told you to do so. So I understand that you found out about the horrifying organ harvesting from unwilling donors over 30 years ago when you were a medical student in China. What happened back then? In that time, I already working in the central lab in one of the hospital in my school, and we uh, we are doing some uh, we were doing some research to try to publish some paper. So the research really using technology called the tissue typing. So that's the basic test that we were using for research. But the, the one day they came to us say, there is a criminal will be sentenced to death. We are going to use their organs. That time they are using kidney. So they want to, to have a tissue being tapped. That's the first time I really come across this, some information about the transplantation in China. Then we asked how old the patient, the, the donor, then they said it's 18, it's very young. Then we said, what's the problem with him? And they said it's, uh, he um, participated in gang rape to, the, I think, the daughter of one of the higher officials. So within a few days, we were told, then they sent, sentenced this guy to death. And that's why they know what time they are going to, he will be executed. And uh, so they already had a plan to use his organ and the kidney. That's the first time we know something about the transplantation in China. It's a very chaotic situation. And the, uh, there is no paper or consent signed by family member or uh, himself. And I did remember we checking about the information, any consensus document. They said, oh, he's an enemy of uh, uh, state. We can use whatever he can give. And uh, that's a contribution he can make to the state. 
So it's a very scary experience, but I did have some impact on me. So I know the situation in China, in especially in transplant med uh, transplant medicine, is not conform with the international normal law or the rules. Growing up in that society and knowing the political situation, was it somewhat not surprising to find that out, or was it shocking? Still shocking Still because sh the way the the witnesses uh, told us the story, because uh, in past you kind of know they using this the organ from criminals, and it's what really shocked me. Uh, shocking to me is uh, now the peaceful practitioners incarcerated, then the, uh, the basically because of their faith. And the, their faith is not threatened to anyone, to government or to society. It's actually beneficial to a society if everyone can peacefully practice their kind, truthfulness, and tolerance. The society will become better. Those people just simply because they have a large number of the practitioner pool and the, the uh, Chinese communist leader become paranoid or jealous about the uh, popularity of this group. Then they uh, start to have a persecution. When you saw Rachel Maddow's show where she mentions you in her hit piece segment, where she makes fun of you for confronting Hu Jintao, about his genocide persecution of Falun Gong. It's similar to making fun of someone who's trying to expose the Holocaust when it was happening. What did you think? I feel the um, media um, didn't fulfill their responsibility. I cannot say I'm angry, and because as myself as a practitioner, I lived with the principle of the tolerance. But I want to remind the, their team they need to uh, faithfully to speak to the truth to help those loyalist people and their voice can be heard. And how could possibly they can, they are in democratic country, but they speak for those totalitarian government. They really uh, made a mistake. And they really wrong. They should be seriously considered this. You're not upset. So after Maddow's attempt to ridicule you for protesting the most heinous human rights abuses happening for years in China, you just want her and other media who have done the same to seriously consider what they've done. I think it's a humorless and solemn issue and don't believe for one minute that Rachel Maddow didn't know this. But it appears she overrode her conscience to fit her angle on her show that day. So many people all over the world know about the persecution of Falun Gong in China nowadays, unironically with the help of the Epic Times. The Epic Times has also taken hits from MSNBC and other liberal media for being a traditional and truthful source of news, who are also openly anti-communist. The people have been made aware and if Maddow had just done a little research, as people tend to do in her profession, she would have known it's nothing to laugh at. There was no journalistic integrity in her actions, and that segment of hers is what the world has seen. Let me go, uh, lead you back to the March of 2006. And that time, there was two uh, eyewitnesses from China came to Epoch Time, and they made a serious accusation, forced organ harvesting from a living Falun Gong practitioner of conscience been taking place on a massive scale for years. Uh, Annie and Peter, these two witnesses uh, among them, and the, uh, actually Annie's husband, who is a neurosurgeon, been participating for several years of removing cornea from living Falun Gong practitioners. She mentioned uh, because the organ transplant, because the organ being harvested from practitioner, practitioner often the time died in great pain, and but their organ being used by others 
who traveled to China and to pay a high price and to get organ transplant. To understand the situation in China, we have to go back to the tradition and the history of how Chinese people view a transplant. And we know in China, and the uh, basically from the 70s, they almost entirely depends on organ from executed prisoners and the without consent from the prisoner itself or from their families. But it's come to our attention is uh, the China's transplant industry and underwent uh, exponential increase after the 2000s. Uh, we all know the uh, persecution against practitioners start out in 1999. And the policy issued by Communist Party is Jiang Zemin. is a genocidal, basically. And uh, so any police or officers in the prisons, and if they have the practitioner died during the time of prison, and they basically didn't take any responsibility or accountability. Another thing I want to uh, mention is uh, uh, by searching the internet, and uh, we did see uh, widespread the advertising by hospital, by China's uh, organ harvesting uh, called China's Organ Network. They mentioned the they can basically patient that can obtain the organ just in a few weeks. The price that they listed in internet is ranging three thousand dollar per pair of uh, cornea to a hundred thousand dollar for heart, and advertising in three or four different languages. This really, uh, as a professional, right, medical professional, mm -hmm. really implying that, and in China they must have a or exist of a large living donor pool that's uh, available for butchering on demand. So the eyewitnesses uh, from this Annie and the Peter uh, revealed is practitioner being uh, targeted for organ harvesting. And uh, we can see this is part of uh, the communist regime genocide policy because of this genocidal policy against this large face-based group. Quite a number of the uh, investigators, uh, like David Kilgore, David uh, Matas, and the Ethan Gottman, and Duffer, that's a doctor against the forced organ harvesting, and also uh, the Organ Harvest Research Center they all published their independent data and on research on this issue. The conclusion, the logical conclusion from them, and they say is uh, Falun Gong practitioner constitute China's living organ donor pool and killed by demand on demand to supply the needs of ever expanding a look, uh, lucrative Chinese. Uh, transplant industry. So after Chinese eyewitnesses went to the Epic Times, independent investigators got involved. They did in fact find out that the organ harvesting of living Falun Gong practitioners was happening on a massive scale in China. I believe those numbers are beyond anything that we would want to imagine. China has a lucrative organ transplant market which is odd, as you will hear when you explain, where years ago, they were harvesting organs from executed criminals, many times without a fair trial or legal representation, because that's not needed in China. They began at some point to harvest organs from living detainees. More specifically, thousands upon thousands of Falun Gong practitioners in re-education camps and prisons became living organ donors. They sat in jail, taking blood tests and having medical exams. These practitioners who don't drink, smoke, or do drugs, because part of the practice is improving the mind and body through gentle Qigong exercises, 
and assimilating to the universal characteristics of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. They don't fight back. They used to exercise in large groups at the parks all over in China until the crackdown. The crackdown was over 20 years ago. In the late 90s, Chinese government surveys said up to 70 million people were practicing Falun Gong daily. Health bills were decreasing, crime rates were falling, and morality was rising. So why were these people targeted for elimination and organ harvesting? Mona Yu was one of the millions meditating in parks every day. There was a park across the street from my house. Because the first exercise site couldn't hold so many people anymore, it divided into the second, the third, the fourth. So at every street corner and in every park, you could see people practicing Falun Gong. It was from different kind in society. It was many policemen and military. It was just fundamental part of society at that time, and everybody knew somebody who practiced. Falun Gong is a traditional practice of self-cultivation, a practice of slow-moving exercises, meditation, and studying of the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, and trying to adopt those into your life. While morning exercises had always been popular in China, Falun Gong brought more than just health benefits. For thousands of years, the Chinese people have believed in Buddhas and Taoists and becoming an immortal. Falun Gong really dared to talk about these things. And immediately, people took it to heart. Oh, the true ancient good things of China have come back. However, after 50 years of political campaigns to destroy traditional beliefs, any revival of spirituality was seen as a threat to communist rule. Since I was 11, I experienced all of the Chinese Communist Party's campaigns. Group after group of good people were targeted. There was no faith, no truth. So we know China for years, uh, they don't have an organ donation system. And that means it's nothing like United States, if you have a driver license, you can sign, and in the back of the license, saying if accident happened, uh, uh, for example, severe car accident happened to me, lost a life, uh, and I have a right to sign up the paper, say I want to donate my organ to anyone who are waiting in the list. But in China, there is absolutely no such such system exists. Mainly because in Chinese culture, they feel if people die, and they better and to have a whole body preserved. Because there is a traditional belief belief people coming from above. So when they die, they they better keep everything intact, then they can have a chance to return where they coming from. So that's why and in, uh, in China there is a no uh, just no organ donation system like western society. So given that, uh, given the fact of that and then so given the fact the um, the number of the transplant uh, in China uh, completed after 2000 year of 2000 which is a significant, uh, exceeding the number of the donor pool which are available for transplant from the published data, then you have to wondering why the uh, those organ coming from, where the organ coming from. Because the uh, after these two uh, witnesses came to Epoch Time to reveal the uh, horrific uh, story about leaving Falun Gong practitioner's organ being harvested for organ transplant. Uh, we did have uh, some research and on the number of the transplant uh, finished in China every year. And so we take a look at the 
what possible number and available for each year for transplant. There is significant discrepancy. And then you would uh, ask uh, where this organ coming from. And the, the story really gave us a clue and the vast majority of the practitioner had been jailed during that period of time because of genocidal policy by Communist Party against the practitioner. And so many people have been disappeared Oh, they jailed and then they forced to have a health exam and to, to have a retail checking examination on their organ status. And the many people, and um, not only uh, just one case, uh, quite a number of the report and uh, revealing the practitioner when they die and the uh, their family member later look at their uh, cadaver then they found out that they are being open. There are some open incision. Their organ disappeared. Yeah, I know when I saw that you had spoken out on the White House lawn, I, I held my breath going, what's going to happen? Because they took you away. But, you know, there was a debate. Should, should journalists be allowed to speak that way? And, and I thought, how could she not? She knows what's happening. You know what was happening. You can't just stand there and look at Hu Jintao and, and, and not speak up. So I was totally on your side when I saw that. I knew it was the right thing. Thank you. That, that act just for the sake of saving people and stop the crime against humanity. Of course, you can debate whether or not that's a good occasion. I, I guess... The, after a few months of the uh, talking with many media, that's the time, and uh, I feel it's emotionally kind of kind of anxious because the we know people being killed on a daily basis, but the crime cannot be exposed, and that makes me. Uh, you can say maybe it's a kind of a rude to have that. <laughs> the. Uh, protesting, and you can also debate that's whether or not it's a good platform to speak out. Of course, from the protocol point of view, I kind of violate the protocol of the press. But from the human rights point of view, and I feel I have an obligation to speak out for those being in danger or being any time, any minute will be uh, dragged away to be organ harvest and to be killed. Sometimes you know, I often give the uh, allergy for the other people. So when you see people dying in or almost dying in the street because a car accident or whatever accident in the street, you need to rush there and stop every car from every that directions, rush the patient to the ER, right? You try to save the, the people's life. That's mostly important. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us here at America Daily. Thank you. All right, thank thank you, you for inviting me here. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Join us next time as we talk to military veteran support experts. Once again, I'm Vanessa Rios Gomez. Thanks for listening. This is America Daily. Bringing you the best in truthful news updates and in-depth reports happening now. 